ओके सो गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो टुडे आई विल टॉक ऑन ए आई फॉर सोशल गुड सो आई विल ट्राई टू समो एस्टेब्लिश थ्रू माई टॉक हाउ ए आई कैन इनडायरेक्टली हेल्प आस इन एस्टेब्लिशिंग इन फाइन एट एपिटी विद द कॉमन पीपल ऑफ द सोसाइटी सो माई जार्नी एज ए ए आई साइंटिस्ट स्टार्टेड इन द इयर टू थाउजेंड फाइव वोन आई जयन द इंडियन स्टेटिस्टिकल इंस्टीट्यूट कोलकाता एज ए पी एच डी स्टूडेंट and i and i must say that uh, my interest in ai was nurtured by my phd supervisor professor sangamitra bandopadhyay so she is a very you know strong woman she is also an example of women empowerment she is padmasri awardee of this year 2022 in the field of science and technology she is also the first lady director of indian statistical institute kolkata and now she is in the second uh, she is basically continuing her second tenure so uh, she was a doyen in her, in the field of ai research but she was very down to earth and she basically helped me in uh, being passionate about the ai research so you know uh, good supervision is like a good parenting you have to be tough and clear and sometimes you also have to be very kind and generous and she was excellent in both of them so yes so in the year 2011 i joined iit patna as a faculty in the department of computer science and engineering and uh, you, you now in uh, in computer science and engineering department there is a, a group named ai nlp ml and this group group was basically created by our former director professor pushpa bhattacharya and he also helped me in understanding the concept of natural language processing better so why natural language processing is so important in real world so uh, coming to the research theme so you know ai is nowadays very uh, buzz word and ai is a big umbrella you know ai has applications in various domains so whatever tools and techniques we are designing for ai that is basically going to benefit the common people of the society and that is the infinite affinity so uh, what is ai for social good so united nations has identified 17 goals and if you are applying ai for solving any of the problem statements related to these 17 goals then this is called ai for social good so one such goal is well being and the good health so uh, first of all i would like to mention about one word on ai for mental health you know mental health is very much important as well like as physical health but we often ignore our health mental health it is making our it is responsible for our social being our psychological our emotional well being and it is also somehow you know our acts our behaviors towards others our thinking process all are controlled by the mental health so if we ignore mental health then will be in a big problem and if you see the developing countries or the under developed countries Yeah, the the number of the ratio between the psychiatrist and the uh, patients who are suffering from mental disorders is alarming. I was discussing with my PhD student Tulika Shah. Now she already completed PhD under my supervision from IIT Patna, and now she is a uh, she is in UK. Uh, she joined as a faculty. So uh, we just started discussing that can we do something for mental health people, like people who are suffering from mental disorders. can we app develop some ai assistant for uh, for those kind of patients so we just came up with an idea that uh, if we can develop a ai assistant which will be a fast point of contact so when somebody is suffering from any kind of mental disorder it could be depression anxiety uh, any kind of you know any other kind of mental disorders so what we need initially we need a shoulder to cry on somebody who can simply listen to us listen to our problems and can provide us some motivational responses so basically so that our morale can be boosted up so uh, if motivated by this we uh, tried developing a ai based assistant which is also called the motivational chatbot whose task is to generate some motivational and the empathetic responses it is basically called the natural language generation it's a uh, complicated task under natural language processing uh, here you have to generate human like responses you just uh, try to imagine that you want to ge ge generate human like responses which is a very intelligent task and uh, with the help of the recent techniques like deep learning machine learning we can do that 
but we need a huge uh, corpus of the data because deep learning techniques are resource hungry and they require huge amount of data and uh, this data is a kind of supervision. So based on this data only we can develop a technique which can generate human like responses and that too will have empathy and the, and the motivational in nature. So uh, when we started working in this particular field, we first searched a lot in the internet but we did not find any corpus or the data set which is of this particular nature. So but then what next? So we just started thinking how to generate our own resources for, for, for solving this particular problem. Then we found some uh, medical forums or the support uh, forums, you know, these kind of medical forums are very popular in uh, US and UK where users can register anonymously and then you know you can discuss about your mental health related issues with others. So like there will be a support seeker or user that user can ask a question and the other users will try to you know provide some answer to those questions. So there are some kind of forums related to mental health as well. So we identified them and we crawl the data from those forums. Now, how to check the quality of data? Because you know in AI, uh, ethics plays a very important role and also the biasness. Like AI tools and techniques are designed using data. So if data is having some implicit or explicit bias, that will, that will also be propagated to your AI system. So your data should be bias, bias free and also a good quality. But we are not domain experts, we check, cannot check the quality of the data. So we consulted one psychiatrist of Ames Patna, Dr. Pankaj Kumar. So he helped us in this particular project. So he initially checked the quality of this data that we crawl from the medical forums. So now this data was in, you know, it was a multi-party conversation. Because user was asking a question and there were many users who can answer that question. So it's called a multi-party conversation. But for our research, we need a dyadic conversation because there will be a support seeker who will ask a question and then there will be this virtual agent or the AI assistant who will try to generate some motivational or the empathetic responses. So it's a dyadic conversation. So how to map this multi-party conversations into dyadic form? And also there are some constants like our AI assistant should never utter any kind of negative responses because our task is uh, just to motivate the user. We do not really want to uh, replace the psychiatrist. And also the second thing is that this uh, in the during the conversation the AI assistant should not provide any kind of you know drug related support like it should not provide any kind of medicinal support. It's simply a you know soldier to cry on. So uh, based on these guidelines, we consulted Dr. Pankaj Kumar and then we, uh, we created some annotation guidelines, how to create data of our need. And we employed some annotators, human annotators, those are graduate students and uh, these annotation guidelines are given to them. We also took some virtual sessions and then finally they created the data which is of our nature. So, uh, and this data quality is again checked by uh, Sir, uh, Dr. Pankaj Kumar. So, with the help of deep learning, reinforcement learning, we are able to create such an assistant. And this assistant is basically generating the uh, motivational responses. So, uh, so yeah, so there you can see this is an example of a data sample. So, uh, uh, continuing this particular, uh, you know, assistant conversational agent work, you know, uh, conversa conversational agents are everywhere like Alexa, Siri, these are examples of conversational agents. So these conversational agents have many applications and uh, you know, we also want to do, develop some conversational agents for in the field of healthcare. So uh, Abhishek Tiwari is another PhD student of mine. So he is a Prime Minister Research Fellow and he one day came up with an idea can we develop a virtual doctor? So, you know, in India, if you see the number of physicians versus patient, this ratio is very uh, alarming. So, can we develop a virtual doctor? So, this task of the virtual doctor is to, is to identify the symptoms, extract the symptom information from the patient. So, and then after extracting the symptom information, that can be given to a senior doctor or a disease classification module 
and the senior doctor or the disease classification module can predict the appropriate disease. So this is the overall task. So now uh, with this symptom extraction, you know when you are uh, asking some symptom names from the patient, so patient will write, uh, give the answer in, in the form of text. Now it is called the information extraction task. Uh, you have to basically somehow extract the symptom information from the patient. You know that the other challenge is that some symptoms, the some medic medicinal term, names of the symptoms are not known to the common people of India. And sometimes symptoms are also ambiguous. Like maybe you have a symptom, but you are not able to. It's very difficult to understand exactly what is the terminology of this particular symptom. So we work in the multimodal space. So now the patient can also express their symptoms either through text or through image okay so you know it's a totally a, uh, unique uh, model or a novel uh, problem statement where you the uh, uh, the patient can converse with the uh, with the with the agent virtual doctor either through image or or through text and from the image also you have to able we have to basically extract the symptom names so again you know the, this kind of data set was not existing so Abhishek uh, uh, is in dis uh, was in discussion with a doctor, Dr. Minakshi from Ames Rishikesh and with her help we crawled uh, some you know symptom names and the corresponding images from Google, the open source Google uh, photos and then she verified the quality of those photos and we were able to uh, build our own this kind of multimodal data set and uh, the, you know there, there are several symptoms and for each symptom there are several images and we build a image identification module as well. So this image identification module is able to identify the symptom which is present in the image. So this virtual doctor is not only, uh, it is basically, you know, it is it will, it will continue doing some conversation with the patient and will try to understand the symptom from the patient. And the virtual doctor should not ask for an irrelevant symptom. When the, then the user's interest, you know, user will be very much unhappy with the situation. So, and then after extracting the symptoms, this disease classification module will try to predict the disease. And not only that, there will be a, that one report will also be generated. So, this report will contain the explanations. So, if suppose virtual doctor is, uh, is recognizing a particular or predicting a particular disease, what are the based on what symptoms it is doing this prediction? So this we are trying to make an explainable AI system. So yeah, so this is the about the virtual doctor, and uh, we uh, I just would like to mention about some work on how AI can also help us in improving the our well-being, like our, our quality of life. So uh, nowadays we are very popularly using the social media platforms. And you know, in social media platforms, hate speech, cyber bullying are very common. So, can we develop, can we develop a AI based tool which can automatically detect this kind of hate contents or the cyber bullying contents from the, from this social media post. So, the handling social media post is not very easy because you know, social media data is full of noises. We are often writing abbreviations or the short forms why we are writing in the social media and uh, many URLs are also present in the social media and the social media data is also not complete. We do not write complete English sentences in the social media and the other challenge is in the uh, multilingual country like India where we can talk, we, we, we can speak multiple languages and so when we write in social media we often switch from one language to another language which is called the code mixing or the code switching. And, uh, and now it is multimedia contents are also very popular in social media. Whenever we are writing something, we are also uploading some image of the particular event or some video of the particular event. So uh, basically, so it was very challenging to uh, deal with the social media data and uh, you know, uh, there was no work, uh, there are very limited number of works in uh, hate speech detection for Indian setting. So we created our own data which is uh, consisting of memes. You know memes are collection of images and the text. And memes have also sarcasm, sar some memes are sarcastic in nature. And as I mentioned this multimedia, uh, the multimodal information is giving us better information to understand what the user is trying to say 
and whether this post is a hit or non hit so uh, so basically we develop this nims data set which is in code mix format we basically crawl data in the indian setting so post is in the hindi and english so it's uh, it's in the code mix format and then uh, we de develop some ai based tools to automatically detect whether this post contains hate or non hate and there are some other tasks also involved with this hate speech detection like when somebody is writing some hate content can there be a intervention which can uh, suggest you that no this kind of contents are not appropriate and why if if somebody is supposed to typing something which has some hate content and our ai based tool has already detected this so maybe there could be ai based assistant which will provide the suggestion that see it's it's not appropriate to post this kind of uh, you know this kind of messages so this is the uh, intervention so we are also working on intervention generation that to in indian setting and another important task of hate speech is the normalization so if there will be ai based tool which can provide an alternative suggestion which is non hate so this is called the hate normalization so yes with the support of my phd students uh, krishanu molik is my phd student we are basically working on developing various tools and techniques for uh, detecting hate speech intervention generation normalization in indian scenario especially from memes so yes so, so coming to this uh, our theme for this infinite affinity whatever i am today it's a combined effort of people surrounding us surrounding me basically so you know i must uh, you, uh, i learned a lot from my mentors and teachers and my students are we, i am continuously learning from my students so without their support it was not possible for me to do this kind of research so it's a combined effort you know it's not possible because you know this kind that the kind of research that we are doing it is not possible without the support of a good number of students and also i just would like to mention about my uh, family members my friends my colleagues who are they are behind balancing you know mental health and the physical health also i really would like to work uh, keep on working in this particular field for uh, developing some new ai based tools and techniques for improving the quality of life so that you know finally we, uh, the aim is to deploy these products and, oh, and we will be able to establish an infinite affinity with the common people of the society thank you